All right. Flashing. One, two, one, two. Last scene. Last scene. Nice and quiet, everybody. Here we go. Turning. Okay, ready? And action. Action. Oh, shit. Hey! Hey! Hey, what's up, y'all? Ladies and gentle bitches, welcome back. Welcome to... <sighs> H.T. Hayes. My name is Troy, and this is... Uh... Yeah, it's empty, but that's not gonna stop us, baby, because music awaits. A brand new Porter Robinson album titled Smile. You sick son of a bitch. It's sick. You're forcing me to smile through all of this. I see what's happening here. I see. You reel me in with nurture, with all the nice botanica, all the folk tropica, kind of electronic dance, feel good energy. Oh, connects to my soul as a musician. And then right when my life is going through turmoil, BOOM! You drop an album. Are you watching me? Where is he? Where is that fucker? But it is 10 tracks and 40 minutes and nine seconds. The cover art is looking like some inflatable guy. It looks like maybe like an, uh, an inflatable anime version of Porter Robinson, but it seems like it's deflated a little bit, like almost as if it was inflated at some point and is now in the process of deflating. The fact that we're also getting a little bit of this electronic dance music, you know, resurgence in pop culture and in pop music again uh, with Brad and all of this kind of like good Dewey, dancey club energy, funky dancey club energy. I just, I, 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 I want to see the man win, truly. Which one would you pick? Porter Robinson's son or Charlie XCX daughter? Let me know in the chat. Why not Charlie? Why not? Why not? We could, we could be bumping it, 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 bumping it. Enough yapping. First track is Knock Yourself Out XD. Just like the title with the emotes, bro. The old school. Oh, this one's for the millennials, baby. Oh, let's go. Dude, it's like Owl City took a popper, bro. I'm sorry. That's just sorry. This is gonna be so much fucking fun, dude. You have no idea how much fun this is gonna be. Oh, it's about to get kawaii as fuck. I threw my phone into the sea. Simple human being. Your voice. How to brush my teeth without asking my teeth. Okay, just first, ew, a little bit. A little, a little ill. You don't know how to brush your teeth without your team? Oh, who has he become? Using this voice, like this cleaned voice energy now, like it's just straightforward. Dude, he might be working late, y'all. He just might be. Yes, it's satire. Yes, it's cute. He's hitting with that cute, quirkly, quirkly energy. I threw my phone into the sea. Oh, sorry, I just want to say the sea, that's literally a One Piece reference. Listen. If you don't listen to me right now, if you don't think I will not make anime references, you've got the wrong motherfucking one, bitch. It's gonna happen, okay? Somebody, he mentions the C, you best not have a devil fruit, brother. Because you're not coming back up. Sorry, I have to listen to the music now. Forgot that part. And I'm everything you talk about. Why should you keep letting yourself be let down? The sliding dude, the glissando. And they said I didn't have vocabulary, bitch. I'm in the mirror, baby, let it all out. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Dude, I love Love that synth, the way that it goes minor in just the last part. Wow, dude, holy shit. I haven't listened to this single in like a minute, so I've just, this is like reliving it for the first time, bro. I'm everything you talk about. Why should you keep letting yourself get let down? Porter questions why people who dislike him don't just stop listening. Instead, they keep being negative and hating. Oh, he's talking his shit. That's right, baby. Addressing the haters in the opening track of your album. Yeah, this is hard. Something's hard. I don't know. What? Sorry. Don't know my schedule on the fifth. Bitch, I'm Taylor Swift. Got a hundred million on my wrist. Physically sick. Can't at the airport. I'm sorry, can I get a pick? Can you sad story? Another reason not to quit. And I'm everything you tell. Dude, shoot the 
them laser beams at me, brother. Shoot them at me, bro. I'm gonna use the world to stop them. That's incredible, bro. All the beeps and boops taking me back to my youth. My life was just Stop it, bro! Don't stop it. Keep it going. Smile. Can't get the smile off of my face, bro. Can't smile challenge. I failed. I'll wear a big smile. I got a drink in my hand. What's he sipping on? What is he sipping on? What is he sipping on, dude? I feel like he's a Gatorade at a party kind of guy. Like, I don't think he's getting like too crazy, you know? Like, throw one shot of like vodka in a Gatorade. That's the Porter Robinson special. Because he cares about you. He wants you to get your electrolytes. Ele electrolyte. Electrolytes. Hello? Chat? Did this song make me hallucinate? Well, now that my heart rate is officially at 5,000, just about, why not get into the next one? Why not, dude? What's the worst that could happen? A stroke? <laughs> you think that's gonna scare me, dude? Makes me want to bust up into some formations. Makes me want to just pop a little boom. I actually did used to cheerlead a little bit in high school. And that's what's crazy because it's part of my life. And, and suddenly now Porter's just like in there. She's got hearts in her eyes And she draws me kissing other guys Physically paused. I, he's saying that this is this is odd. This is not normal. This doesn't make him feel like it should, right? Like like she's assuming potentially. So it's like very cool how he's talking about this. Really, you, I just never thought that I would I would hear somebody talk about like fanfic in a song like this. Like this is actually like kind of incredible that he's done this. He has now drawn the line between these two things. Dude, that lead synth is just so addicting when it pops up into that high register. Oh man, that is spectacular, bro. Oh, this pre-chorus is cool because it introduces this concept of like, maybe instead of her being reliant on him to have these feelings, he's actually relying on her as like a fan to like continue to be a fan and whatnot. But he says in the course, it's not fair because I knew you like the back of my hands. Well, don't you care? I gave you everything. Kind of like from her perspective, you know? And it's like, now we kind of get to see her perspective of this. Yeah, dude, I like this song, bro. It's not your fault you're living in a madhouse. The little cowbell, bro. Bro is bringing back cowbell. How does he do that shit, man? It's like I'm just back. I'm back on MySpace, bro. I've been searching for that kind of like guitar tone. And this is giving it to me. Like it's awesome, man. For somebody who's came up so much into like the electronic genre, like the beautiful gardeny botanica kind of stuff, to have him go so hard into this band driven, like dude, those drums. Oh my god, it just it's so impressive, dude. It really is. Bridge. Somehow, I don't even know what she does now. No, just you wish her the best, right? 
God, this acoustic. It's not bad. Oh, shit, fuck it, good step. Cause I know you like the back of my head. Dude, this is insane, bro. Break it down like that. Break it down like that. The ooh, maybe I need her moment. Oh, then he just pumps it. Just floors the pedal for the ending. The way that like all of these uh, instruments still bend and flow to kind of his whim and everything. It's awesome that he's like backing up this like pop punk kind of aesthetic with the kind of synths that feel like festival, enormous, huge synths. It's like, yeah, dude, give me that ooey gooey shit. Give me that ear candy, fuzzy ass, like scrum diddly umptious ear candy most synth. It's like, I just want it. I just want it. It's just crazy. Like thinking about the people who have sticked with you as like a creator for the entire time and, and seeing them in the view of like this cheerleader and, and thinking that you need them more than they need you. Like it's just such a complex feeling. The support aspect of it, you know, because it's powerful. The connection we have with, with artists is sacred because it touches a part of us. That's why when, when they do shitty things and we find out they're shitty people, it cuts so deep. It's like, ah, how dare you be a dickhead asshole. I related to that thing that you created with your heart and soul. Russian roulette's next. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Porter, if I cry right now. I do feel like we have to talk a little bit about the verse in this because it doesn't immediately get super emotional, right? I mean, we get the eyes closing moment, the gambling with the life. We kind of get that when we read the title too, where it's like, all right, something's gonna be at risk, right? Russian roulette is a very dangerous thing that you should never ever do, ever. And he's here saying that it's an option because he's bored, apparently. You won't get bored with Russian roulette, as in like, you know, maybe he's bored now. Best friend, we don't have to pretend one day I could make your salary. I feel like this is him saying like, like one day he'll be so successful that his friends can like depend on him, you know? But the fact that he has to depend on the whole machine to make it right depends on him and his emotions is a hard thing to kind of live with. I'm dealing with a similar issue right now because I've kind of been in the, th in the throes of emotions right now and I don't always feel like jimming out and listening to music, but you have to put yourself on, you know? You have to, you have to try and, and, and show up and that's more than, more than a lot of the battle, you know? So yeah, just kind of like easily painting the picture here. It also says in the first lyrics is that he's smiling for the team. Like he's like, there's a picture being being taken and he's staring directly into the storm. Oh, he's t he's taking a picture at the finish line of the f of the last album and he's staring into the storm of the next one. Like it's an unsure thing. Okay, interesting. Pitchfork reports. Pitchfork. second verse, bro. First of all, why are you watching Pitchfork, huh? Don't you know where you need to be getting your, your opinions? 
Hmm? AOTY.com slash HT Hayes, baby. Just listen to me. It's okay. That's right. You know, you can see them, but don't take it for take it with a grain of salt. Honestly, take all of it with a grain of salt. Me too. Me, I'm not excluded from this narrative. I have my own biases, and I'm fully... I know. I know my type. Here he's saying that uh, they're calling him the big new thing. YouTube review. Wow. I feel seen. I feel seen, brother. Take a piss into its own mouth. The funny monkey does this. How do you work that into a song, dude? That's just impressive, bro. Now my hand is drawn. I put the gun against the thing that's stopping me. Then it comes my eyes. I really like all the little filters that he has on the drums that kind of make them like a little bit bit crunchy and a little bit like almost like he has like a little 8-bit filter on everything. Still feels very digital even though we're rocking with that like band aesthetic. We got a lot of guitar. I just gotta say when someone pointed this out to me in this last verse it went over my head the first time I listened to it. He's talking about drawing his hand and putting the gun against the thing that's stopping him which is his own brain. He's putting the gun against his head dude. We get the chorus and it's recontextualized to what he's doing currently. Oh my god. Maybe this time still sounds so good so far away he's retreated in volume literally retreated does such a good job at like breaking it down so quiet and building it all back up with that slow strumming dude oh my god I wanna kiss my cat one more time I wanna thank my dad one more time I wanna marry her one more time Gotta give citations, dude, on this. See my mom? One right there. You mentioned moms, dude. What the fuck? Play my songs? You're talking career? You're talking stuff that we, as fans, genuinely care about? Yeah! I wanna lose my phone one more time? You quirky son of a bitch! You want to experience the inconveniences of life. That is still, that is ta talking about how important life is. There's just the little inconveniences he's gonna miss. <laughs> I think, I think it's just that it's very convincing that these are things that you would think about while you're going through a potential situation like that where you are thinking about ending your life, you know? I wanna marry her. <laughs> you mentioned my baby. Oh, oh. I wanna. I swear to God, he's in my walls. He's in my computer. He's in the camera right now. He's 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 in this bitch. Oh no, this is oh this third verse is, dude. All this. Lock him up. <laughs> the kick drum and bass suggests the song is coming to a close. That's the format cut we used to. Cliches like this are beautiful because they reflect us when we are beautiful. Yeah, Take, pretty much. For example, That's what I said. this chord progression, it only became taboo because it was too powerful. Ooh, taboo. That's why you won't forget it. Don't kill yourself, you idiot.
the don't kill yourself, you idiot, at the end, in the robot voice, it almost paints a picture where it's like, in the future, this AI intelligence or, or this kind of technology is actually created to help us benefit our mental health and like help with the environment. Like imagine just like a Roomba that comes in your room whenever you're sad and it's like, Hey, have you eaten today? How much water have you drank today? When was the last time you've done 10 push-ups? You should go for a run or at least open a window. I would love that. The end of the song really feels like the start of the album. I'm, s I'm still so excited. I feel like I'm empty. I don't have any tears left. I don't know if this is gonna keep me in sad, but we are staying on brand though. Not MySpace, but still an OG, Pinterest. The next song is Perfect Pinterest Garden. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, now that I'm a homeowner, thinking about these gardens, I'm thinking about these plants now. Dude, I'm about to enter so many eras. Entering my Bob the Builder era. All right, teach me a thing or two. Two by fours, nails, a hammer, <laughs> a hoe. <laughs> The vocal chops. I don't care if you buy it, I just want you to pay. Keep you there in my pocket, cause you got in the way. I know you so much better, do you understand? I got your name on my sweater and your life in my hands. Oh, Ooh, some kind of toxic oh, relationship. I don't need my fucking money, I need you Ooh. to pretend. A little simulation Hello. of being a friend. I think we all feel better when you play the game. Somebody's gotta say the things I'm trying not to say. Oh, oh. He's kind of being polite right now, but he's he's kind of just like breaking down these parasocial walls, I feel like he's really talking about it. Cause it's saying that he's he's refraining from like saying negative things about fame because he doesn't want to feel like he's like playing the game, you know. Somebody's gotta say things I'm trying not to say. Dude, just say them, brother. Just say them. You have a whole song. You have my interest. He's like, somebody's gotta say it. And he's like looking around the room. Somebody. Somebody has to say something, right? <laughs> say it, Porter. Say it. I like the fact that we have these little like doo-wop harmonies come in on both ears for him during this part because he's talking about like a little fantasy that he has saying oh darling I know a place where we won't be spotted he he wants to get out of uh, obligations of potentially being a pop star or like being a uh, being like an artist in the in in the limelight right it's relatable everybody wants to have their peace and quiet and here he's saying he wants to live in a Pinterest garden yeah brother yeah I, I, I don't know if I love it as much as the first three but I do feel like he's kind of treading on on a similar topic as cheerleader almost. Like it's kind of similar to the concept of that. I don't, he, he's right though. I don't really see a whole lot of artists talking about stuff like that. So I appreciate the nuanced, uh, the nuanced take. I wish he was just kind of like actually saying it rather than being like, oh, someone's got to say it. I mean, you're kind of saying it by saying someone has to say it, right? Like you're kind of saying the thing, but okay, let's get into the next one. Year of the cup. The cup. The the cup? What could this mean? This is a mysterious title. It's none of my goddamn business what's in the cup, but it's a beautiful thing, man. Oh, but hello? It's not a beautiful thing because nobody knows what's in the cup. That's the whole thing. Unless you come up and drink what's in my cup, then how can you say it's a beautiful thing? Also, oh. when people drink alcohol, they react. So whatever the hell was in my cup, the only reaction I did was got more popular, more successful 
did a lot more things than I've ever done. Picked up a guitar, learned how to play it, learned how to put on the auto tunes and stretch my voice. I probably should pick that cup back up. <laughs> well, that was Lil Wayne and Tim Westwood. Oh my God. Hold on, what is Lil Wayne saying? Because he is, I feel like he's dropping some knowledge right now. How can you say something is beautiful when you haven't essentially interacted with it, right? Like you're looking at it from afar and you're not familiarized with it. And, and Wayne is saying that how can you say something is beautiful when you don't interact? He's essentially saying he's drinking out of his own cup and he's liking what he's drinking. He furthered himself because he 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 delved into what? In, into the cup. I think I'm I think I'm think that's what he's saying, right? <laughs> God, what is this song gonna be about, dude? I swore not to care, but on that night I couldn't help it, I took out all of my shame on a random guy who probably liked me in that oh, no. night It was the obvious first time you were disappointed I spewed out that irresponsible mantra I'm sorry I'm like this A Porter Robinson song, dude. What is? What? Did he have to clear this? Up? That's so funny that we just get a little bit more of Wayne. The hell was in his cup? Fuck you! What it was in my go? Suck my dick. <laughs> Guess that screaming at my audience works, and everyone likes oh, it. I dreamed of cutting my Achilles heel, wanting people to like me. Feels like he's feeling his flaws a little bit more honestly now. And that's real because he says he's dreaming about cutting his Achilles heel, wanting people to like him. Like he's talking about wounding himself so he can get sympathy to make sure that people still care about him and like him. Sing, fuck you, you don't deserve me the bus went totally silent Whoa. and help me. What I meant to say is I gnashed my teeth right in front of you. Oh man. I never change, would you love me? Expecting the negative clever Turning the question around to me was obvious I hate this version of me that was safe and sanitized thoroughly You think you'll let people down and define some perfect apology Answer was obvious. The answer was obvious. Is that not me? What's in the cup? Is it really none of my goddamn business? So he's saying that they turn the question around to him. If I never change, would you love me? The, the human capacity for change is, is the major theme of Smile. When Avicii died by suicide in 2018, having spoken about his mental health suffering due to his job, says Robinson, a wake-up call for a lot of people. Robinson is sober these days. Sometimes he jokes, it's a cliche in the former DJ circles. Almost every single DJ who was popular in the 2010s is now extremely sober. Wow. I mean, it's a big party scene, dude. That stuff is just flowing. Yeah, I can understand that. So maybe that's what he's talking about when he's talking about putting down the cup. Literally in the interview, what Porter's trying to connect to this kind of ex escapes me a little bit right now, but it just feels like he's wrestling with it all. The next one, Kitsune Maizan Freestyle. Okay. A little demon slayer. Hmm? A little breathing style. Okay, I see you. Is he gonna bring the bars? Oh, it's kind of fucked up a little bit. Stick. 
Like, no, that's fire. Oh my God, dude, that's heat. Okay, so he's trying to hype, it feels like he's trying to hype himself back up, right? Yeah, we're gonna try to look good, trying not to feel bad. He's saying the drip can cure the big sad. I like it, I like it. I like that energy. <laughs> saying that maybe when you reach the mountaintop, you realize it's not all what it's talked about to be. Interesting, so y'all are saying that the Kitsune part is a fashion designer and it's made out of nothing as in like poor materials. Yeah, he's saying like the fame, the, the drip, the clout and everything, it's not worth it. It's just not, it's not a real thing. The real thing is the connection that you have with people. I feel that. I felt that when I met a bunch of you guys at VidCon. I was like, oh dude, like you connect with your people. It's, yeah, incredible, dude. Ooh, a little vocal change. My mother. Dude, I love that he's kind of making like a yo mama joke. I might do a song with your mom. I think she wants to see me on the track. I think your mom actually likes me. I think your mom calls me every Sunday and we gossip. But it's like deep down, it's like a little bit of a flex, but also he has a good relationship with your parents, dude. Ugh, what can't this guy do? Ugly pretty boy. That's a new one. I feel like I just got over like rat boy. Like we were talking about rat guys. And now I feel like ugly pretty what does that mean like willem dafoe but kind of in like a like a weird kind of way like if you took a picture of each of his individual facial features it'd be like oh that's beautiful whoa gorgeous oh my gosh look at that eye on a sculpted nose but then when you pull it together it's just like oh okay well he can work yeah for sure oh i like the hits loving all these little acoustics in both ears like the little high-end like noodling stuff it's uh, it's so good I always feel like I just found the thing that's haunting me. Like, I felt like, you know, if I if I grow up my eyelashes or if I get a haircut or if I get Estee Lauder night serum or whatever, if I get that new outfit, like, I, like, I got my, like, teeth fixed. I regret it so much, man. Like, what? I can't, I can't get the teeth that my mom gave me back. My mom. Aww. Well, I mean, sometimes that's, like, a necessity, though, right? No. Kitsune Maison freestyle. So did he freestyle this, bro? Oh my gosh. Okay, in this interlude, he says, I always feel like I found the thing that's haunting me. Like I felt like if I grow out my eyelashes, I'm sorry, that caught me like a stray, dude. Growing out your eyelashes, I did have to do that one time because I cut my eyelashes. Y'all remember when I cut my eyelashes because I thought they were too long and Angela was like, hey, what are you doing? You're a psycho. But they were too long because I couldn't see. I, I, they were like in my vision, you know? So or if I get a haircut, or if Estee Lauder Night Serum. Hey, Angela would like this one as an esthetician. Hey baby, question for later. Estee La Lauder Night Serum, any good? That was so much fun. I like I like the ease of that one. That didn't feel like a super heavy one, like it was crazy in your face, like I like the acoustic kind of stuff. Feels like a little bit of that old school porter a little bit too. Let's get into the next song, Easier to Love You. Okay, little electric guitar riff. A slower tempo. Okay. What are we getting in through? There you were. You're gonna make a scene. Comparing yourself to the person you were at age 17. Porter. My suit on. Porter, what are you doing? And I tie my tie. Why? Where are we going? I look like someone. saw that coming. So yeah, giving a little bit of like, you don't know you're beautiful. You're insecure. You're insecure. You're insecure. I mean, obviously it's about himself, right? Looking back on a time. I found a letter. Dear future me. I promise I'll take care of the person we'll both be eventually. Look 
soundtrack from the old albums as he addresses the future me because it's it's that voice taking over. Don't look at me. Have a moment. I rip my heart out through my ears, bro. Why don't you? Oh, don't tell me that right now, dude. Don't give me that window of insight, bro, into the trans community right now. I will break. I will break if you see this as a tran as a transitionary song in that context. What? Yo, why'd you have to say that, dude? <laughs> Please be disappointed in me. It's awesome, Banjo! Obvious I wasn't who you think it would be. Oh, they hold so on it. Yeah. That minor four, dude. If you could only see yourself like me. And wouldn't it hurt much less when you were lonely? If you could only see yourself like me. The old fucking synth from the old album, bro. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. How dare you have such a beautiful song in this bitch? Dude, how dare you make a song that makes you want to love myself again, dude? What are you doing? You're like cutting a hole in me and then sewing me back up, dude. Oops, sorry. <laughs> You're fine, though. Good music. God, dude. And the fact that it's relatable on multiple senses. Like, dude. So gentle with the message and the instruments. Wow. Wow. Not smiling anymore. <laughs> no, that's not true. I am smiling. But yeah, when that synth comes in and you get that nostalgic feeling, just from like being a Porter fan too, it's like, oh, dude. He's so good. He's so good at like showing the depth of his character through sound choices. It is just impressive how he sculpts his own identity through the melodies and the synth choices that he's chosen to do. It just gives you such a freeing feeling. The next song is titled Mona Lisa. And you know what they say about artists that have songs called Mona Lisa. <laughs> They usually slap. Rarely have I ever heard a song titled Mona Lisa. That does not slap. Whenever you see Mona Lisa pop up, it's like, oh, the artist was cooking on that one. High praise. Like, oh, I made the Mona Lisa of songs. I'm gonna incorporate this incredible, iconic piece of art into some kind of metaphor or, or, or meaning of a song that relates to another facet of art. Mm. Yeah, dude, yeah. Interval flip, Whee! just to that seventh. Ah, oh, love it. So Lulu took the first pre-chorus. Delicate is all you are. You're all I want to see. Oh, okay. So they're maybe rising up a little Mona Lisa. Okay, I see you. And now Angel Frost. Oh, I like that their last names are both Frost. Frost children. I've never heard of them, but okay. Wait, 
Is this Lulu an angel? Dude, is this Claire's old producer, dude? Dude, wait a minute. I'm gonna lose my mind right now. So my, my, my friend Claire, I don't know if you guys know Claire. You should know Claire. She's incredible. She has this EP called Answer Me. Prost. Lulu. Wait a minute. That's them? Holy shit, bro. Oh, wow. What a small world, dude. I didn't know that they had a whole project that's called Frost Children. That's a dope name. Do you make up? It's just so sweet. I like the vocal. I, you do it for me. I love that vocal. Whoa. God, dude, the production on this thing, that whole reverse moment was gorgeous. That's like perfectly like angsty. Opting to just do a huge hit to start the chorus off with makes it so impactful. And then the boom, the first thing you say after it is Mona Lisa. Dude, that's awesome. Anything is oh, anything the heart stops. To me, cause I remember Ooh, what is that low rumble? Remember me. Am I just one more face to the top? Okay, that does sound a little bit like One Direction. Damn, dude, okay. Dude, oh, the little noodle at the end, bro. Yeah, that was incredible, dude. Frost children? Frost babies. Might just have to adopt them now. Cause that was incredible, dude. I really like both of their different alternating vocals alongside Porters too. I feel like they had like a different, a little bit different of a production, but it still felt authentic to what they were trying to accomplish here. Porter uses Mona Lisa as a painting as a metaphor for being surrounded by fans. Like how the actual Mona Lisa painting is surrounded by people in a museum. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this dual message. Between 1503 and 1519, the Mona Lisa was painted. Dudes were getting parasocial with paintings since the 1500s, dude. Can you imagine being like a, like just like a, like a dude in the 1500s and you're just like, whoa, Mona Lisa. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen ever. Beautiful baddie, dude. Double tap. The next one is called, is there really no happiness? I'm out of tears, bro. We're out. We're done. There's no more left. Oh shit, this one sounds like Kingdom Hearts, bro. Remember who you are back when you felt the innocence of childlike whimsy. And oh. all it's before, it's all done. Is there really no happiness without this feeling? Give me a drug. Oh. Is there really no Not like bottling a, 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 a specific kind of liquid love. Obviously not. I love his raw vocals like that. I mean, they're not raw. They're definitely doubled and like tuned a little bit. But dude, just the fact that he's carrying this whole album with vocals like this, having the line in there, is there really no happiness without this feeling? When trying to remember like your past and like the, the feelings of, of, of being a child and being younger than you are now, you know, or just like reminiscing about a specific part of your life. No happiness without the feeling of like knowing that those happy days are over. Making love to the memory you think. I've been chasing the track and you've been watching me 
queen. Chasing the dragon. All right, dude. I need to know what he's maining as in D&D, bro. I need to know. Are you going to go straight bard? Nah, we can't all be bards, right? We can't all be hosiers. I can see him as like a halfling. I can see him as like a little guy, you know? Love those drums. And the fact that that open hat's in the right ear, too. Transport into the Scott Pilgrim video game. Like, what did love when he does that shit, bro? Just kidding. <laughs> Again, another, another great tune. Well, finally, we have the last tune, track 10. Everything to me. Something means everything to him. The fact that we've listened all the way through and heard him out, let him go on his mental health journey through this album. Does that mean everything? I guess we'll see. Ooh. We got some more credits on this one, too. Written by Gavin Bend, James L Ivy, Luke Shipley, and Michael Stone, as well as Porter Robinson. That's awesome. My long life. It went quickly. Maybe he is a gnome. It's you and me and the air in between. Mm -hmm. Leaving space for Jesus. Oh. Okay, he's locking in. He's in love mode. His eyes are not. He's the strobe lights and the heart signs are coming from his eyeballs, dude. This seems like it's everything to me. Cute man. Nice little noodly. If this is goodbye. Oh, and it is. If I won't see you again. Oh, good outro. Phone again. If I need a virtue, it's a full narrative circle. Maybe I should be king. Crush me like a plushie. I'll be one of your things. And maybe I'm addicted to the look in your eyes. It's hard to say you've had enough when you get this high. Oh, and you go low. Nice. Dude, the air in between is the music. The sound waves going through the air. Oh, wow, bro. Oh, dude. Nothing else in the Nothing else in the room. This seems like it's everything to me. And that's it. God, you wholesome little bitch. Ah. Oh. Ending it with an I love you, dude. Why do I like don't want him to go? I need, I need a deluxe. Wow, dude. And of course it's 360. <laughs> you know, he's right, dude. I haven't really seen an artist come out with a project where they are like directly talking about the good and bad things about. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. I guess I just appreciate his, his candor with it. You know, like approaching the album like he's going into this new pop star era, but at the same time shining the light on maybe some 
not so comfortable stuff that happens when you have super diehard fans. And it's like this huge moment where we get to kind of, he gets to kind of reflect on like the person that he was versus the person he is now as flawed as he still may seem. Like I can't help but feel like he's headed in the right direction. So when he has a song like this to end it with, when he's talking about, Oh, it's just you and me and the air between it's reflected in the way that the music is produced. You're getting it raw with the acoustics with the, the live drums with the the dry like it's not a bunch of crazy synths and i just love the way that this album starts versus the way that it ends like we start with so much hype and we end from what seems like in such a nice comfortable place not as like super deeply emotional as i feel like nurture was to like the very being of my soul like i'll be honest with with you because it's so fresh in my mind it doesn't hit with the same level of gravity that like nurture hits but just the fact that we're able to kind of see him pull off this pop star aesthetic with uh, the huge synths and the fact that we just kind of feel like a huge ride throughout the entire thing is still so much fun and uh, I really do like it. I'm, I'm glad that Porter has an album like this with songs like this that he can play uh, to just kind of like hype himself up too because like the guy deserves it, you know? But that's going to be a wrap for your boy. And a wrap for the room, dude. Oh my god. This is going to be the last album stream that we have in this room. this room. We've listened to a lot of albums in here, man. I'll never forget you. Cue the montage. Dead ass right now? I don't want to end stream. I don't want to do it. I don't want to say goodbye. I don't want to say goodbye. I'm not doing it. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm staying right here. You can't make me. God. We built the Patreon in this room to what it is today. Like, yo, we're... I was invited out to VidCon because of the stuff that I was doing in this room. We went through our sponsorship era. Now we don't have to do sponsorships anymore because the Patreon is so funded beautifully. I cried real tears in this room multiple times. This is the last place where I'm not gonna have a kid, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's coming anytime soon. Mom, don't. Damn it, this is the outro. Now I really gotta go. Shit! Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for giving me a career. Thank you for letting me buy a house. You know how unreal that is? Especially in Atlanta? Unheard of, dude. That's y'all, man. That's y'all on TikTok, too. All the posters that clip the Patreon shit, forever thankful. So as always, stay happy, healthy, and strong. And I'll see you in the next one. At the new crib. Peace. Yes.